I don't believe that it's true that religion is moral or ethical. I certainly don't believe, of course, that any of its explanations about the origin of our species or the cosmos or its ultimate destiny are true either. In fact, I think most of these have been conclusively, utterly discredited. But I'll deal with the remaining claim. Is it moral to believe that your sins, yours and mine, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, can be forgiven by the punishment of another person? Is it ethical to believe that? I would submit that the doctrine of vicarious redemption by human sacrifice is utterly immoral. I might, if I wished, if I knew any of you, you were my friends, or even if I didn't know you, but I just loved the idea of you. I could say, look, I'll pay your debts for you. Maybe you'll pay me back someday, but for now I can get you out of trouble. I could say, if I really loved someone who'd been sentenced to prison, if I could find a way of saying I'd serve your sentence, I'd try and do it. I could do what Sidney Carton does in The Tale of Two Cities, if you like. I'm very unlikely to do this unless you've been incredibly sweet to me. I'll take your place on the scaffold, but I can't take away your responsibilities. I can't forgive what you did. I can't say you didn't do it. I can't make you washed clean. The name for that in primitive Middle Eastern society was, was scapegoating. You pile the sins of the tribe on a goat, you drive that goat into the desert to die of thirst and hunger, and you think you've taken away the sins of the tribe. A positively immoral doctrine that abolishes the concept of personal responsibility on which all ethics and all morality must depend. It has a further implication. I'm told that I have to have a share in this human sacrifice, even though it took place long before I was born. I had no say in it happening. I wasn't consulted about it. Had I been present, I would have been bound to do my best to stop the public torture and execution of an eccentric preacher. I would do the same even now. No, no, I'm implicated in it. I myself drove in the nails. I was present at Calvary. It confirms the original filthy sin in which I was conceived and born the sin of Adam and Genesis. Again, this may sound a mad belief, but it is the Christian belief. Well, it's uh, here that we find something very sinister about monotheism and about religious practice in general. It is incipiently at least, and I think often explicitly, totalitarian. I have no say in this. I am born under a celestial dictatorship which I could not have had any hand in choosing. I don't put myself under its government. I am told that it can watch me while I sleep. I'm told that it can convict me of, here's the definition of totalitarianism, thought crime. For what I think, I may be convicted and condemned. And that if I commit a right action, it's only to evade this punishment. And if I commit a wrong action, I'm going to be uh, caught up not just with punishment in life, but even after I'm dead. <clears throat> in the Old Testament, gruesome as it is, recommending as it is of genocide, racism, tribalism, slavery, and the displacement and destruction of others. Terrible as the Old Testament uh, gods are, they don't promise to punish the dead. There's no talk of torturing you after the earth has closed over the Amalekites. Only till when gentle Jesus, meek and mild, makes his appearance are those who won't accept the message told they must depart into everlasting fire. Is this morality? Is this ethics? I submit not only is it not, not only does it come with the false promise of vicarious redemption, but it is the origin of the totalitarian principle which has been such a burden and shame to our species uh, for so long. Um, I further think that it undermines us in our most essential integrity. It dissolves our obligation to live and witness in truth. Which of us would say that we would believe something because it might cheer us up or tell our children that something was true because it might dry their eyes? Which of us indulges in wishful thinking who really cares about the, the pursuit of truth at all costs and at all hazards? Can it not be said, do you not in fact hear it said repeatedly about religion and by the religious themselves that, well, it may not be really true, the stories may be fairy tales. Uh, the history may be dubious, but it provides consolation. Can anyone hear themselves say, saying this or have it said of them without some kind of embarrassment, without the concession 
that thinking here is directly wishful. That yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else and have them dissolved, but it's not true and it's not morally sound. On our integrity, our basic integrity, in knowing right from wrong and being able to choose a right action over a wrong one, I think one must repudiate the claim that one doesn't have this moral discrimination innately, that no, it must come only from the agency of a celestial dictatorship, which one must love and simultaneously fear. What is it like? I've never tried it. I've never been a cleric. What is it like to lie to children for a living and tell them that they have an authority that they must love, compulsory love, what a grotesque idea, and be terrified of at the same time. What's that like, I want to know? And that we don't have an innate sense of right and wrong. The children don't have an innate sense of fairness and decency, which of course they do. What is it like? I can personalize it to this extent. My mother's uh, Jewish ancestors are told that until they got to Sinai, they'd been dragging themselves around the desert under the impression that adultery, murder, theft, and perjury were all fine. They get to Mount Sinai only to be told it's not kosher after all. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We must have more self-respect than that. If we'd believed that perjury, murder, and theft were all right, we wouldn't have got as far as the foot of Mount Sinai or anywhere else.